Huzzah! How about now? Ah, I heard myself in the other room. That's weird. <laughs> Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me as usual. Uh, hopefully the mic sounds right. No robo voice. I'm using. Hopefully I'm using my interface and my mic properly. <clears throat> the silly naming that I get in Pavu Control. Awesome. Thank you, small. Boom, okay. Today's song, FF7. Yeah, I'm on a Final Fantasy kick. I don't know. These two OC remix albums, just so good. <clears throat> ah, yeah, okay, but moving on. First things first, just going to jump right into it. Uh, let's add some reshade stuff into the shaders category, shall we? And I'm already kind of set up to go here a little bit. Let's just... Gonna do a few things here too. We're gonna add the reshade mod, and we're also gonna um, we're gonna add a, a tag for reshade. Um, just gotta make those things more visible. Um, you know, so when you're looking at one, you can kind of click the button, get to all the rest. Uh, you know, in the future when there are more. So let's get that link out of here. All right. Very good. All right, well. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a download because I do totally want to try reshade like with wine sometime, just for science. Well, and why not start with this one? Cool, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, downloads folder, we got it. Let's just take a quick look at it. Okay, yeah, looks like stuff so okay for my purposes we'll file that for later for the website we'll go ahead and put it in there <clears throat> excuse me after 11 over here. Mm, Okie doke. <laughs> that is a great description. <clears throat> hmm. And that does look rather fancy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, oh, that's great. Cool. Let's just go ahead and put this in there, except <clears throat> let's go ahead and make a slight editorial. It's always awkward when I put me in here. Oh, hey, Gonzo. Greetings. Good day to you, sir. Yeah, it's always awkward when me ends up in there, and I feel weird changing it, but it's not me. It's, you know, it's the manufacturer. So we're going to go ahead and put that in there. Originally created by Sneezes, and there was a link there, so let's go ahead and try and be faithful to that. Oop. Okay, yeah. Of course, there's an ESO Nexus mod. I don't play ESO, but glad to know they're somehow modding the game there. <coughs> Seems with an MMO, like modding would be, you know, non-trivial, but what do I know? Tags. Okay, tags. So, we want tag reshade. And it's going to complain because it doesn't exist yet. And that's fine. 
We'll go ahead and this is a little bit of test driven development. Not really. Usage notes. Um, I would just say <coughs> refer to the mod description for installation details. Very good. Okay. Let's add that tag. And like everything else, tags are Python data structure, in this case a class of a tag that I get from Tagit library, <coughs> I believe by Alex Gaynor, who's made tons of awesome stuff. Boom, there we go, nice. Okay, long time coming. Tag. Shade. Heh. All right. Very nice. Okay. Well, I suppose there's only one thing to do now. Um, let's crunch the website. And actually, one thing I was trying to do earlier, uh, prior to the show, was take a sincere look at why the browser tests didn't work. And, and suffice to say, didn't work it out. Um, continues to be a mystery to me. So, eventually, we'll probably have to just dive into that from the beginning, you know, maybe even write new tests. Maybe what I wrote was just janky. You know, there was some jank in there that I distinctly recall, but hey... It's worth a revisit, I guess. All right. Well, let's go back to the to the plan. So yeah, this is in progress. <clears throat> I'm not gonna. I don't think I'll add reshade directly to any list, but <sighs> it's interesting because I realized yesterday that Google has learned how to. Um, use my website's CFG generator. Here, let me just let me just show you. Uh, I thought it was pretty interesting. Where it gave me, I put a name of a mod in, and uh, it gave me the CFG generator. Oh, goodness. It just gave me the CFG generator. So let's do uh, graphic herbalism. Just that. And yeah, you can see right here, wait, now it doesn't show it today. Well, yesterday there was a CFG generator link, much to my surprise. Um, let me see here, glass. Okay, yeah, here we go. So I mentioned, I was looking for, I was doing research into the glass glow set add-on for GH. And, uh, yeah, you can see down here, Google has learned to use my CFG generator. And we'll just go ahead and click this. And, uh, you know, it takes you to a loadout with just graphic herbalism. But, I mean, that's kind of neat. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's, that's kind of neat. So, uh, anyway, I digress. Thank you, Google. I don't know. Let's see. Good. It's a good first step. We got a reshade tag here. Boom. 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 That's the right page. As is that. All right. Now, so I guess the... The only remaining question, after I move a, what looks like an extra period right there, the only remaining question now is how, how to make these visible 
in any extra way, if at all, right? Like if I just type shader, it doesn't come up in here. That's a little bit of a bummer. Buzz. Shaders, uh, <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> Why so much extra? Okay, that's a major fail. <clears throat> Someday we'll revisit the database searching. Obviously with reshade it comes up, it's in the name. So I guess, I guess that's good enough. And to my point of bringing up the whole Google knows how to use the CFG generator is, you know, this will end up in the sitemap that, is something that Google and other search engines will consume to to know what's on the site, you know. So when when they see that, it'll know, um, and it'll end up in people's queries that way. So I think that should be good enough. Um, and also, it's going to be on the overall latest updates page, which does have a. Thought I did have an RSS feed for this. Hmm. Oh, hey, it's Den. You're in the wrong place, okay? We're serious Morrowind fans here. All right. If you don't like it, you can get it out. Okay. You distracted me. Yes. Yes, except for with the actual trademark. Oh, what was I thinking? Oh, yeah. RSS feed. Small diversion here, but... Yeah, there we go. Excuse me. Latest mod feed. Okay, so the view exists. Feeds mods. Okay. Huh? Oh no. Oh, Firefox. <sighs> Well, yeah, Firefox basically pretends RSS and Atom doesn't exist anymore because they're cool like Google now. Uh, back to my prior statement. Thanks, Google. Although I'm not going to blame them for this. Um, all right, well, hmm, I know. Wait a minute. We can do it this way. Okay, I mean, that looks like a feed. All right. I guess I'm going to just have to check it on my proper feed reader. But, I mean, yeah, that looks like, you know, a giant blob of text inside some XML. Whew. Wow. It is a huge feed, by the way. Hold up. Is it giving me a 234 lines? Wow. Okay. Well, anyhow, it works. Why isn't it on that page? Hmm. Let's add it right now. Latest 100 mods. Uh, let's go back. Uh, okay. Oh, it's been a long time since I looked at this. Mod feed. Don't need to recrunch for this, since it's purely a template change. I eh, feel like I should say more.
All right, and I guess, hmm. So I guess if you're like on a mobile device and you have a feed reader application, you can click this link and it'll probably open up right. Or if you have a desktop URI configuration, um, or maybe your browser is set up to do that. Mine's just mostly vanilla Firefox. There, I like that, okay. That was a worthy diversion in my opinion, okay. But let's see where we're at with the diff. Good old making black do nothing, although I might start just testing in the Docker. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. <coughs> Excuse me. That way at least I'm getting formatting checks. The addition of the reshade, the addition of the tag. We'll put that in separately along with these. Don't know if this is gonna actually go in. This was me trying to trying to make some sense of what Selenium was doing, but yeah. <laughs> That's a time sink for another day. Okay. Um Yeah, so I think I think for now it's good here. Um, Right? All right. Oh no. There we go. This is the one. All right. So while that's crunching, I actually wanted to add a new feature to the back end of the website today and not just do like, you know, editing and stuff. Not that that's, you know, unimportant work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and whoop. Oh, no. I just did something in org mode. All right. I really need to read the giant several hundred page org manual a little bit more for now. I'm just going to be a caveman user. Xing off the boxes in my list. Watching the red hopefully turn green someday. Maybe we'll do it. All right. Uh, yeah, I did, but as I put on here, where is it? Allow setting a folder path for a mod versus just auto-generating it. Um, and the context was I was, you know, adding this one to my local setup here. Um, graphic herbalism, I'm pretty sure, shipped with the glass glow set patch when it came out, or at least shortly thereafter, certainly since the last update years ago. And I just didn't use Glass Glow Set at the time and forgot the patch existed. Somebody may have even told me um, since then, but I forgot until recently when somebody reminded me yet again. And so I'm setting it up in my local folder structure, and I'm thinking, uh, you know, the website is going to make some awkward folder that's not going to be what people have. You know, somebody might have graphic herbalism, patches like I do, uh, and, and Glass Glow Set or whatever, you know. Um, so it should be actually pretty trivial to add this feature into the engine. So without talking about it too much, we're going to see it happen after we go through these, because these are going to be fairly quick. Um, so this one, I don't know if anybody else has experienced this, but I've been, you know, updated my local setup. All my mods are updated, everything, beautiful cities of Morrowind, everything, and just flying around, checking things out, um, normal maps for everything, you know. And I noticed that basically every single tomb had the good old missing mesh uh, symbol. Um, so I don't know, you know, nothing changed with my install for this. Um, we should probably just take a look at it, just this one. Um, so yeah, let's just do that now, just to confirm that something is borked, or do I need to, you know, do I need to actually remove it from the lists? So, okay, this is uh, my minimal configuration setup. And, uh, you know, I think it's safe to say it's going to need uh, Tamriel Rebuilt. So let's just cargo cult my setup for that.
just do a really crappy copy job here. Just enough to get it in. Hmm, okay, I actually deleted this guy from here. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I feel like I had to have done something wrong because um, Gonzo says, interesting, indeed. Because I had somebody mention the TR content was outdated, which is understandable. But that the whole mod was broken was a little surprising to me. So, um, you know, we're going to just try to verify this right now. Oh, and I so I did a little tweaking of my local setup. I really hope it runs better here. Let's... Uh, so, yeah. And uh, maybe you'll see what I mean. Oh. Oops. Oop. Don't try this at home. There we go. I goofed. Oh, that's right. I moved um, to my little, I have a holding folder for stuff that's kind of shuffling out or maybe shuffling in. That's where it exists now. the name I gave it. Capital TR. All right. Fifth or sixth times a charm. And you'll see what I mean. I mean, I hope not, but we'll see. Ho, ho. That was a lot of red. Hey, but it looks okay. Yeah, okay, I mean, you know. I have the draw distance pushed way out. But, I mean, you know, above 15, I would say, is decent performance for the purpose of this stream. Oh, my. Yeah, all that red text back there. Hmm. Ooh, look at this. No missing mesh. Okay, so I borked something. Okay, well, this is why we do this. There it is. That's the one. Now it would be interesting to fly to TR and check those other ones, but I'm going to leave that for later. And for now, we're going to go ahead. Chop that off the list. And I'll resolve that another time. All right, splash screens cleanup. Uh, props to Gonzo on the release of the latest splash screens mod. It's glorious. And um, yeah, I mean, I just figured, you know, because right now we have like a kind of a mishmash of. Oh, all right. On total overhaul, for example. We just have like a mishmash. If you have all of these installed, it's just like the quality level is all over the place. Um, and it just makes sense, I think, to just go with, you know, uh, Gonzo Splash Screens, which has some awesome modern high resolution offerings. So, boom. Yeah, we're doing that. Let's go to shaders. User UI. Yeah. All right. So first off, there is a new structure. For Gonzo's. 
And I went ahead and just, um, I use all of them. But you might want to, you know, poke around and see if you want a more consistent, you know, loading a screen experience. Um, you might want to go with just one or the other, but I'm using them all. So let's go ahead and... some folder paths here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And yeah, I think, you know, just suggest them all. And people might just hopefully be curious and take a look and see which ones they like or, or go with them all like I do. Very good. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll add a updated bump here, and I'm gonna take a sip of my Lacroix. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You definitely noticed with my. I didn't um. What I want to do is I want to pull them out into their own data path, you know, and optionally use them, like, because the, the Xbox splash screens are pretty cool, you know, when you mix them in. So I do still want to have them, but yeah, good call there. Um, you know, suggest folks can maybe give the, the vanilla ones their own path or just rename them like I did for now. I put an underscore in front of the splash folder in my data files folder. Uh, let's see. 25. Time is flying. Okay, wow. And yeah, this is not an accurate description anymore. There are quite a few more than 75 altogether, I think. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll just keep it at that <laughs> for now. And then if you change it, you just let me know. How many do we have in here anyways? Hang on, we can just find out and put the correct number. Thing in my hand, right? Okay, no, so that is right. I'm a dingus. Why did I think there was more? Oh, you know what? I think because when we were talking about it before, you mentioned Gonzo that you had up to. So you you cut it down by quite a bit then. Okay, cool. No, 78, great. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I remember kind of just sitting there and being like, well, okay, time to really get in the zone and check these out. Lots of good art. All right. <clears throat> Speaking of getting in the zone, what do I got here? Let's at least get it current with what you got there. All right. Okay, so that's updated. Now we need to do a little bit of do a little bit of list cleanup here. Mm. Okay. Pretty much what I figured. I don't think we threw a lot of splash screens, if any, into one day modernization. User interface, okay. 
Boom. Yeah, that's everything. Don't try this at home. I have no idea what I just did. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's get this all in the staging area. We got four change log entries to make. I still got to commit that. Uh, yeah, I added that one earlier in the week. Somebody came out of Discord. And it turns out this has been missing from the one day list from day one. I don't know, maybe I heard about it and just forgot about it, but I feel like I haven't really heard about that. Apparently people are having the problem. So I went ahead and just was bored and I did that. Uh, oh, you know what? No, wait. I'm derping right now. All right. I think we'll do removes first. And I really think we don't need a whole spiel about it. And these are, you know, they're good splash screens, no doubt. Um, but yeah, we just want a more consistent, it just works better. I played on my Steam Deck, on my laptop, on my, you know, 4K TV. And it's nice to just have like the consistent, you know, I was playing seriously. I was like lo loading the game, checking something out, closing it, loading the game, checking something out, closing it, wash, rinse, repeat. You know, so I saw a lot of splash screens and it was cool to like have... A more consistent style, you know. Um, again, it would be nice also to have, like, a this is my true vanilla splash screen set, you know, which is, like, the vanilla ones or maybe, like, HD renditions of them. Poodle Sandwich was working on, hopefully he doesn't hate me for saying this, like, an upscale of the Xbox ones that I think would be really cool to see. Um, yeah, but anyway, for now, we're just doing, we're doing this. And these, these ones are good, too. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Gonzo says, I love the Xbox splash screens. It's so unfair. They didn't officially come to PC. Yeah. Um, agreed. You know, they're I agree they're great. My first experience, as I have mentioned before with Morrowind was uh you know on an Xbox console with a Duke controller I think even too I don't think S was like really widespread then which is like I think a good controller looking back um the S rather than the Duke but yeah you know uh I maybe they like what I've learned is common in the video game industry is like things are just lost forever and maybe they like made the four by three version of those for xbox and then somebody just like threw away the source you know or whatever um you would be surprised how literally that how often literally that happens in the game industry and that's all i'm gonna say um oh already did cool okay we need an f string here to describe what's going on <laughs> ice wind dale 2 r.i.p uh, you know, it's in my Icewind Dale is in my backlog. I definitely have it. Um, haven't gotten there yet.
I feel like there's probably a familiar story waiting for me there, though. Oh, right. They, he's, Gonzo says, they can't make an enhanced edition because it's just straight up gone. Yeah, like uh, Final Fantasy VII, for example. Straight up gone. Um, probably all the original Final Fantasies straight up gone, you know, and they were like revert the remake. So I have Final Fantasy VII remake for my Switch. And as I understand it, they basically took the PC version, like a retail copy of it, or maybe they had the source of that. Had like god awful MIDI music and and just other issues. Um, but yeah, I mean, no source. Um, yeah, right. The source of the backdrops, right? So they had to like basically upscale from the from what was I guess extracted from the PC assets. It's really sad. Nine. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I've seen some. I've seen some similar techniques that were used by Met and probably intelligent textures used on Nine. Not the biggest fan of nine. Or eight, for that matter. Um, install options. All right. So we got our boom, boom, boom removals. We got our update here. Let's see how it looks. I don't know what happened. Don't try this at home. He shall. There we go. I can type, I swear. So, yeah, well done, Gonzo, again on the really nice collection. Just going to chug that real quick, take a quick look at it, and then. Um, Put a bow on it. Um, and then, yeah, next up. So, as I said, I was updating my setup. New Illinibi, which is just one of the most mind-blowing dungeon mods, personally, that I've ever seen. Just the design in it is superb. Um, you know, I mean, if we're being honest with ourselves, the vanilla design, no offense for Illinibi. I mean, it wasn't the worst of the caves, in the game, but it wasn't really awe-inspiring, you know? Um, Sten, I know you haven't seen it. But it's basically just like a linear... It's like an 80% linear trudge and then like a, a neato kind of like vertical room and, and some other diversions. Pokemon references. Um... Oh, no, wait. I'm sorry. Pokemon reference would be in the Urshulaku burial cavern. But they're there. And a Final Fantasy VI reference. I think they have a Kefka burial, if I'm remembering correctly. Ha! Huh. It's like they were playing video games over there at Bethesda. Cool. Come on. Oh, come on. Did I goof? Let's see. No. No, I didn't goof. Let's try and flush that cache again. Okay. Let's try this. Very good. Oh, you know what? I can read. But otherwise, I don't know. Yeah, we should, uh, that's right, in the usage notes. Stop. Uh, let's see, something like,
Yeah. That's basically uh, Gonzo says, uh, can't remember what the steps were to do it the open MWA. Just move the original files to another folder. That's basically it. That's all you got to do. Um, yeah, I'm, I might word it a little awkwardly here, so I'm going to type it and then read it back. But uh, we basically want to say that, right? We want to say you can you can rename it or you can put it to another, you know, another folder path. But we'll see. We'll see what sounds good when I read it back to myself. Okay, for a more consistent experience, you may want to rename the splash folder that comes in the Morrowind data files folder, or you can put it into its own data path. I don't know. I think that's not terrible. Let's see it on the page. But I think that would be the... I think that would be the icing on the cake there. But while we're waiting for it to crunch, I'll just go ahead and demonstrate. So I have my Morrowind GOG install here, right? All the familiar files. Oh, man, I forgot I left this book. I have it. Ooh, I wanted to show it on the stream. I have the paperback of this that I bought 20 years ago. Anyway, though, this is the vanilla game data. I put nothing in here. Maybe I put that. I don't remember if that actually comes with it. I might have put that in here. Um, and this, so, you know, by default, the folder doesn't have the underscore in front of it. I just did that. That's why I had a blue loading screen when I did my, you know, minimal loadout. Um, and so one option would be to do something like, you know, we go to our, whoops, mods, user interface. We could say like vanilla flash. Just plop it in there, give it the proper name again, and so now I can we can see the old faithful vanilla stuff again, and yeah, so this is just moving it out of the way, and that way when we play total overhaul, expanded vanilla, whatever else, we just got the nar the totally awesome. Gonzo Splash Collection. Okay. Try one more time. For a more consistent experience, you may want to rename the Splash folder that comes in the Morrowind Data Files folder, or you can put it into its own data path. Let's ship it. I think that's good, honestly. What do I got here? Okay. Trying to see how much time we got. We're good. Boom. I like it. Uh, let's see here. into the mic. Okay. We add a link to the updates at um, feed. Definitely want to add that, especially having a discussion with somebody recently on IRC about using the Atom feeds. I'm not the only one who still likes them. All right. Let's take a moment now to, um, shall we, run some tests. Fire those off right there. Let's go back to the plan. New Illinidi. 
Doesn't need to clean. By the way, I was like saying how much I love it. Doesn't need to be clean anymore. Um, at least according to the, you know, what is it? Version that I have. Yes. Version. Ugh. Give me a link to the Pearl website. That's a good way to make your runaway screaming. Anyways, this one. That's the version I'm using. I really would like to make a, I don't know, like a Delta plugin, plugin that can like clean the YAML output or something. I've thought about that. That would require <sighs> re-implementing that. Anyway. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, go to some code here. And this is... Where exactly am I looking here? New Illu Nibby. Just outstanding. Seeloff has just produced so much amazing content. How? <laughs> and yeah, I'm definitely thankful. Okay, needs cleaning? No. Huh. Well, let's take a look. Caves and Dungeon. Did I, did past me, just forget to ever do this? No, no, I... Hmm. Yeah, well. I don't know. Go ahead and delete that, because it doesn't apply anymore. Gotta love problems that solve themselves. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we're going to add an actual feature to the back end of the website. And so what I want to do is, again, we have, uh, let's take New Ill and Eevee for example here. This right here on every single mod is just taken from the title, scrubbed of all the things that would like, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> crazy progress today indeed. I've been thinking about how to actually do that. Um, anyway, uh, so what we can do is I've been, the intention is we're going to look at the code where I do this, which exists in the, uh, uh, the mod model, which is a little awkward to say. And this is basically, if you're not familiar with Django, or things like Django. This is how you basically, you have a model here um, in the model view controller pattern. And this is how we say, I have in my database, so everything you see on the website, if you're not familiar with database website architecture kind of, um, you have like a Python process that's running on the, or a UWSGI process in the case of this website, which is a Python thingy and other languages. Anyway, though, it, it's this process reads my Python code. It takes the requests, you know, so in this case, the, the request is HTTPS modding dash openmw.com mods new LNE dash new LNEB. It takes that, processes it, hands it to the Python. The Python does whatever. In this case of this page, on the whatever includes reaching into the database, saying, do we have a mod with a slug? You can see right here, slug is a field we got there. New dash L and EB, and it does, and it grabs the content out, um, renders HTML, spits out the HTML as a response to you in your browser. That's an extreme TLDR. But anyway, another way we can see this is actually in the database itself. And you can see here, these are like, these are just like default crap you get with Django. And up, oh, up, oh, whoa, <laughs> got more here, not less. Um, gotta figure out how to change that. Anyway, you can see my stuff. Yeah, let's go that again. We've got my stuff starting down here, right? We got a table for listed mods, mod lists, mod tags, mods, blah, 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 blah. And if we go back to the Python code, you can see all that alt2. We got mods alt2. This is actually a, uh, what's called a many-to-many -many relationship. It means it goes to 
In this case, it's another instance of a mod. It will be an alternative to, but yeah, anyway, so, so this is, this is how you do the magic. You take the Python code and you put it into the database this way. So what we do though is since it is a Python class, you can do cool stuff like just making fields. So like I can, I can do, you know, mod dot compat link and it gives me in fact this is exactly what we do in the templates mod dot compat link and it gives me some html um you know uh re like rendering html and returning it like this is a little you know if we were taking like user data you wouldn't want to do it but everything we have all the content we're pulling from the database is totally trustworthy so i can be a little reckless here and if we go further down here though we can see the where the magic happens and I haven't looked at this code in a minute. Look at this. <laughs> Just gonna go ahead and delete that. But that is an artifact of, and one of the reasons why I don't really mess with Android OpenMW is because it just doesn't have any concept, to my knowledge, of multiple folder paths, which was like, when I started using OpenMW, it was like, you know, oh my goodness, you know, this is like the best thing since sliced bread feature. Um, Android didn't have it made using OpenMW on Android more of a pain than it was worth for me, you know, especially now that I got a Steam Deck. Anywho, though, so here we are. Ooh, key is not accessed. Okay, well. There we go. Yeah, that's right. One of these days, I got to figure out why it doesn't think items is there, but this is clearly a dict. It clearly has a field items. Anywho, though, so... I have here, you can see different methods for the three OSs. And just to show you how that works on the page. Mm, mod snippet. Uh, we got here, get modder. Boom. And so in the HTML, it looks like this. Just say mod, get modder Linux. And it ends up looking something like this. And if we can't, because we, uh, I forget where we, I forget where we actually are trying to get the OS. Maybe that's in the, somewhere I'm looking at the user agent, which is, which is janky to begin with, um, you know, because a browser can easily lie by design or because the user made it lie about their user agent. Um, most people don't. You know, you can change your user agent to like the Internet Explorer 6 user agent. Just to be trolling. Might actually break some websites. I don't, you don't. I wouldn't be surprised if major websites depended on that in some weird way. Anyway, I'm kind of going off the deep end here. Let's make this happen. So what I want to do to make this work is we need another database table for the custom folder that we want to set. But I want to be a little thoughtful about this. I mean, because we could just do that. We could just say, blah, I got another string field, a character field, char field. Or I can say, well, do we want to have maybe like a table or a dictionary with keys that say maybe like a mod list slug and then a different field for the mod list. I think that would be very useful for something like usage notes, but maybe not for folder paths. So we're just going to keep it a little more simple than that. Um, and so I'm not to be clear, I'm not talking about this, which someday will be customizable, but that would be a JavaScript feature. And I haven't had enough coffee to write JavaScript today. What I'm talking about would be, excuse me, clean name here. And so let's actually, so what we'll do here is we'll say, we'll add our field and we'll say, you know, if self new field, uh, let's go name it. Um, return that or 
if we haven't defined a custom name because we just don't care, then go with this. Um, you know, the auto-generated stuff that we already have. So it should be easy enough, actually. So the hardest part will be naming the field. And I'm just going to call it custom... custom folder hmm. okay and uh, we'll just do max length 250 I think that might actually be the default I would have to consult Django Docs but I also don't like silently accepting some value because then if it changes I'll be like oh my yeah you know my database migrations will fail and then I'll have to think about that save myself future self some trouble you know when I started making the website I was doing the help text but I don't really I don't really use that so I'm just gonna omit it I've omitted it for basically everything that wasn't here in the beginning picture yeah there was plans to have pictures <laughs> still someday might do that you know because I could do like an external link to GitLab or something you know um anywho custom folder okay so I don't just simply add the custom folder, though. I need to, now when we, in the all-familiar, so-loved database crunching process, we're going to need to tell that code to use it if it's there. Um, so let's do that. And and for, for a first guinea pig of this, I'll pick um, maybe one of the weapon sheathing or existing graphic herbalism patches. And then we'll, you know, when it's confirmed working, we'll add this one. And I think it'll be a better experience for people to have a, a not, you know, randomly stupid folder name. Okay, so let's find that code. Mm -hmm. Data. Uh-huh, okay. Hmm. Bear with me while I remember how my website works. Generate mod. We're getting somewhere. Here we go. This is the beast. All right. So. I really should have like a splat like that or something, but I'm committed. Uh, let's see, custom folder. Um, all right. And this is this is a good example of just some lazy, hideous code. I bet you there's probably a lot better way to do this, you know, in a idiomatic Python way. But I don't I don't actually care that much. It works, and you can, and most importantly, it's not too clever you can look at it and understand what's going on here, you know. If this function is up, oops, given the custom folder argument, which is none by default, then we do new, just like the stuff above, we update the data we're passing in to the crunching. Good? All right. Now let's see here. Let's pick a test case, shall we? Let's do graphic herbalism. Actually, this is, this is good, okay. So let's look at what I have here. Uh, what's this, patches? No. Something just occurred to me. But we're just going to go ahead and change the category to match it up. Uh, well, what just occurred to me is I'm going to 
put the graphic herbalism base folder. I'm just going to, here, let's, so I have patches here. No, 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 no. I'm derping. Here we go. Mop. Graphic herbalism patch. Right here. And so what's awkward about this is, yeah, in my just uh, lazy auto-generated thing we have, what it should say is mop, blah, you know. Um, instead, we get this. So first things first, we're going to extract it from the patches category, put it into the performance category where mop is itself. And let's see, five. Yeah, okay. Yoink. Good. Huh. Well, I guess. I was going to say it's wild that's never been updated, but I guess not too wild. 20. What do we got here? 12 noon. We get this feature in, though. It's going to be pretty cool. Okay. Custom folder path. Custom folder. Um, so I'm going to say gimme. this just had an idea no 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 I was gonna try and code a way to allow us to keep it in the patches category and like uh, yeah let's honestly let's try this Bear with me here. Because I've done this. I've actually done this elsewhere in the code. It's not that hideous. <laughs> I promise. This is, a, this is a patch. I don't know. I feel like it should just stay here. We can go performance. Uh -huh. Just like that. But then we have the problem of Windows being a little awkward. But we can, we can handle that. Because again, I'm doing that. I'm doing that somewhere else. Windows, and this makes actually the code change a lot more complicated. So I'm already actually thinking about all the work I'm having to do. I'm kind of like backing myself off from it. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not gonna do it this way. It's weird to have something in the patches category, but have the folder path be. Change my mind. And just I could see this feature getting away too bloated. And blowing up. Okay, so back to our... Um, where are we at? Clean name here. So, if self cost... Uh, oh, you know what? So we need to do this first. Django used to be really relaxed about stuff like this. And now it stops you. Which I appreciate. It's better to be explicit there instead of just like, eh, can we know? You know, database engines care about that kind of stuff, even though I don't. Okay. And this is actually a change we won't need to crunch the database for, but I'm going to crunch it 
while I'm hacking. Okay. Just like that. Hoop. Date update. Silly me. interesting do we even use that wow this is a blast <laughs> it's weird when you look at code that you wrote years ago and I'm just like what there's no note here yeah special handling but why though I try to be a little bit more informative to my future self nowadays this is a lesson you learn as a budding programmer for sure um, well I suppose in this case, we simply give we give that custom folder because that's that's why we set it. No. So if everything goes well, this will just work. if I didn't forget something. All right. Anxiously awaiting that one. That's not what we wanted. Are we even getting here? This is what they call puts debugging. Hey, all right, well, so we do hit that code path. Morrowind optimization path. Okay. Am I just looking at cached stuff? There we go. Yeah, that's right. Maybe it was right and I'm blind. Cool. Hey, it works. All right. So, I think this is a lot better. Because this reflects, like, where it actually lives, right? Performance. Optimization patch. Herbalism patch. Success. All right, so let's go ahead and get that committed. Nice. I kind of thought this would be a somewhat easy thing to add, and thankfully I was right. Ooh, I have a feeling it's going to hate. Black always hates the way Django output. This is like a generated file for the database migration. Generated. Um, Black always hates it. And sometimes I forget Black hates it, and then the tests will fail, and, and it's just like being annoyed by things I don't care about. <laughs> That's programming, really. Good. Good. That's a different commit. 
Yeah, okay. Um, well, actually, let's back the data change out. Some what in that commit message, but a lot of why. Instead of auto-generating it, we need that's the key part. Um, and I could write a book about like the specific example, but the commit log will reveal all. Remember that. Cool. That's great. Yeah, look at that. We got six commits ready to go. All right. Very cool. Put the check on that one. So <clears throat> I think next up, I'm going to go ahead and add this one. Okay, yeah, all that's loaded up. The nice thing about running the tests in a Docker is um, I don't have to worry about, like, the process reading stuff as I'm editing it locally because I have a tendency to, like, start the test or start the database crunch and then, like, hack on things, and it'll put... Sometimes if it, like, happens to read the file right as I'm, like, saving it or writing or something, it'll blow up in a weird way. <clears throat> Won't happen in a Docker because what happens is there's a one-time, you know, lift of the code into the Docker image, into the Docker container, rather. Uh, and then it does its thing in there, and, and I'm free to do here what I want. So, indeed I shall. Let's put the note over there. Uh, game play, I think, is what graphic herbalism is. Graphic. Did I have a... There we go. Most of that's going away. Okay. Now let's take a peek. I do this patches folder, but I don't know if I'm going to include it in the... I'm not going to. Because this 19 glass glow set of it's not going to collide with anything. And, you know, you just plop it. If you're sane, you'll just plop it in your... You know, out here. If I were doing it again, I wouldn't do that. But leaving it that way. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> it just occurred to me there's like pff, a lot of beautiful cities of Morrowind patches that will benefit from this feature, but it's so. Oh, we'll save that for another day. That's going to be like Ramiros graveyard all over again. All right. Anyway, yeah, just had that fleeting thought and was, uh, had a Psyduck moment. One, 
two, one, four. What's all this? Yeah, see, this is another one. Hmm. I not, so uh, I could bundle this glass glow set patch into this one. I'm not gonna do that though, honestly. Uh, it need because it needs to load apart from these anyway. Gonzo asks, <clears throat> "What is different about the new BCOM?" Well, I don't know. So I went basically from mid-February until this week without checking any updates. So I don't know when exactly it was introduced, but we have um, we have a couple new options. And I will just show you on my local setup here. Beautiful. Oop. Beautiful. There we go. So we got a couple new options here. Um, this was always a thorn in my side. I don't know if this was like a Linux problem or what, but the ampersand that was right here always just like, I don't know, OpenMW would not read it. <clears throat> and that data path just would, you know, not be right. So I would rename it to a capital up uppercase. And this folder has now been renamed. I don't need to do that anymore. Yippee. But now we got the concept art ghost fence pillars are, you know, um, into options now. They're not part of the default. Rotating planets on Ghostgate. Also optional. Gonzo says that's just an OpenMW problem. Yeah, okay. With the amazing config parser. I just hope they don't make it YAML. Anyway. Um, Vanilla Scar. I added by mistake and we'll be removing that from my local. So ignore that. We're not putting that on there. Um, and then, yeah, this is a new option. More tribal... Irbum Nimsum, and I wanted to look into that more closely. Um, I don't know if this is like a, you know, is this like a, let's see here. It's a mod I don't know about, or is it just a, yeah, it looks like it's just an option. So I got to read about it some more, but it looks like it's an option for BCOM. But these would be, so these would be the ones, This these three. Concept art, ghost uh, fence pillars, ghost gate rotating planets, these two used to be defaults, now are optional. And this one, which just, you know, looks pretty cool. So, um, yeah, that's what we'll, what we'll be doing, hopefully, with BCOM. Um, just changing some data paths around. All right. Back to here. I'm going to lift some of the language I use for patch for Uh, speaking of the good old ampersand folder issue, I actually have been looking at bringing back mines and caverns. Excellent mod, and just recently had, an up, recently had an update. There is an ampersand in the folder that it comes with. I really don't want to bug somebody to just change the folder. You know, if somebody's asking me ahead of time, you know, you got any packaging advice, if I notice something like that, I'll say it. But I wouldn't go out of my way to bother the poor guy about... Um, about it but yeah it's unfortunate because I do think I will add it back in and yeah that'll have to just be something I tell folks to look out for um, 
unless we get brave and we look into the parsing code that causes the problem. Open MW CFG parser. I think the only thing, no, I think that would be less fun to look at than even the UI code in the launcher, which I actually sincerely want to look at someday. I want to like, you know, why can't we have features like validator in the launcher? We could, absolutely. I would just have to fork it, which I have no problem doing. Uh, that is, you know, <laughs> eventually. I'm not saying I'm forking the launcher. Don't quote me on that. Mm. I'm not even going to bother with that. Oh, yeah, real nice, farmer. <laughs> well, you're my expert C++ programmer friend, so you're helping me. Boom! Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, I hope you like QT. Yeah, you like QT? Got to grab my app image for the launcher and just fire it up. It's not, it's actually like Kartanov and Capo and Fred's and others have done a lot of great work to make it, you know, a lot better than it used to be, but... There's room for improvement. Hi, by the way. QT is okay. Yeah, I never programmed with it myself. Um, you know, I like it. And by that, I mean I don't like completely hate it. Um, oh, you know what? Another thing I should do. This comes. Tell people where this actually comes from. And let's take a look where I got it from. Patches and replacers. Yeah. Right there. Okay. All right. Well. I was just about to say, let's see it, but then I'm now I'm I've been working on the site a bit and I remember only read QT code, farmer says. Nicer than just trying to directly write X eleven stuff. Yeah, for I bet. Oh, that sounds hideous. Who wants to do that? Um, I need to make a data path for this. Glass. Good. Yeah, I mean I've never done any X programming, really like I think the only UI programming I've ever done, and I don't think Godot Engine counts, but yeah, it's Godot Engine. And I actually think Godot Engine could, accessibility concerns, potential accessibility concerns aside, Godot Engine would really make a nice UI base, you know, to make a cross-platform form GUI for something, but some people seem to disagree with me when I brought that up. Mm, okay. Yeah, for sure. I don't mess with C-sharp. Nothing against it. Um, I just don't mess with it. I have wrote... Excuse me. Um, XNA. I did like an XNA tutorial a long time ago. Like eight years ago. And, it, you know, it's fine. Um, but, yeah, I don't mess with it. I just use GD Script. Um, the type annotations are great. Um, it's, you know, made for Godot. So even though it's like crufty itself... There's a lot of advantages to that, you know. <clears throat> it's aware, first and foremost, of like the Godot structure. I liked it. It was like a better Python. Um, and I can use Emacs to write it. Nothing against the editor, which the editor is superb. Godot engine editor made with the Godot engine UI code. You know, it's like the ultimate dog food right there. 
Um, but yeah, it's like when I use Emacs for everything else, it's like a very weird paradigm shift for my hands. As you might imagine. Come on. Like Pascal? I don't know Pascal, man. I'll take your word for it. All right. Did I? <sighs> I done goofed. You learned it in high school. Okay. I learned in high school, I had visual basic programming class, which for me was the um, sit at my computer and listen to music on the CD player class. I remember doing something, but uh, yeah, not much. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gonzo also had Visual Basic. Yeah, so they had a QBasic class too, but somehow I skipped QBasic and went straight to Visual Basic. I assure you, I knew nothing about any of that. All right. Visual Basic was way better. Yeah, I mean, you know, it doesn't make me barf too much even nowadays. Oh, my editor's gone. Whoops. Got a little key happy there. Yeah, because it's probably tightly integrated into, like, Windows, right? So, the farmer says Visual Basic VB script was great. You could write little GUI apps, UI setups. Yeah. Yeah, right. You just had all of Windows there. It's great. You know, on, on Linux, you have to decide... GTK or QT or, you know, run away screaming. There we go. Cool. Got to get some change logs for this, I think. Is this worth uh, mentioning? Folder path changes. Boom. All right, looks great. All right, so we need two change logs, actually. says I feel like the default GUI for Nix star Nix is really HTML I mean I can't disagree with that here's hoping those uh, some not Linux OS that's open source is making like a new not actually chromium under the hood web browser I wish them success. I can't for that. It's called Ladybird. Is the name of the browser. Ladybird. Uh, and apparently they can like render. Serenity OS. Thank you, Farmer. Yeah. I always confuse them with some other dist Linux distro that's not them. 
looked good though. I mean, I read about them, you know, I read the, they recently kind of commented about, you know, we thought this was supposed to be impossible. Drew DeVault once wrote that you cannot make a web browser. And I agree with all the arguments that he makes, but, uh, it is apparently, you know, like anything else possible if you just have time and resources and money. You can't until someone does. That's right, farmer. I don't know if you remember Sanderson. He was one of the old timers from HVS. He once, like, he, we were just chatting. I was in the, his office, and he, he like, kind of calmly leaned back, and I don't know, I must have said something stupid, and he was like, with enough time and money, anything is possible. And and just that, like, Sanderson was, like, an older programmer, you know, and worked at a game studio. And, yeah, man, that just, like, nugget has stuck with me, you know, ever since then. I just remember him saying that. He, yeah, he's a farmer, says... I remember Sanderson's farmer also used to work at HVS. Uh, I actually was his replacement. He is a machine, and he was, like, super smart, too. Like, just one of those old-timer people that didn't complain about how horrible C was. He just wrote good code. Not saying that it's wrong to complain about how horrible C is, you know. I mean, I do that all the time. But yeah, just he was a different kind of beast. And that just sticks with me all the time. Anytime somebody's like, it's impossible. Well, we're seeing N64 on the Mr. now, so take that. Well, at least they're trying. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, he's one of the guys they wanted, along with, uh, I can't remember his name now. He made, like, Atari Kart Kickstarter Williamson, I think, Scott Williamson. He was great. He was very patient with my noob ass. Actually, it was Williamson, I think, one time. He was one of the first people to look at me cross-eyed when I was like, I like Python, and he's like, but significant white space. And at the time, I didn't get it. But now I do. I get it. <laughs> All right. These will be our changelog entries for changing the other one, adding this one. Ooh, you know what? I didn't actually add this one to uh, any mod list. I just said I did. After experiencing the pain, yes. I mean, it's not, to me, it's not the most annoying thing about Python, but certainly it makes, like, if I want to, you know, if I got, like, some specially indented crap, and if I want to indent, like, this block, you know, it's, like, it's a little spicy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right, exactly. I mean, I could always do, like, let's see. Yeah, I got, that's, in case you can't see, there you go. That's white space mode. Yeah, a little dot. Let's count these dots. Sounds pretty good, right? No, we're not doing that. People can complain about curly braces and semicolons all they want, but, you know, like this kind of ambiguity is the kind of stuff that nobody really needs to be thinking about. All right, then. Extra work my little brain can't do anymore. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, you got to, like, save your brain power for the things that you can actually wrangle. I feel you, man. All right. Good, but I didn't actually add that. Let's go do that. It's good for learning in school. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And if you, like, goof the indentation, you know, you have to, like, pay attention to the output. You can get the same kind of thing learning ASM. Yeah, I mean, what's that game that's like ASM? Just get that. Mm. No, <laughs> Roller Coaster Tycoon was, I think, written in ASM. But no, it's like one of those Zaktronics games that, like, the gameplay is ASM. 
<clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, it's on my wish list at GOG. I can't. TIS 100. TIS 1000. Anyway, the gameplay is like ASM. And I thought, hmm. You know, someday when I feel like that kind of a thing, we'll do it. That game is fun. Oh, okay, Farmer says, yes. I figured you probably had it. <laughs> Excuse me. I figured you probably had it. I mean, I totally don't have a large Steam backlog of things I've never played before. But maybe I'll check it out. Because you see, I said it's added, but then that turns out to be lies, because we should see like uh, something like this, featured in mod lists, numbers and all that stuff. It's a lie like the cake. Exapunks. Okay, huh. I think I, I don't think I have that one. Okay. You write custom ASM to hack machines. Cool. Okay. Somebody tried to, a uh, former colleague of mine tried to get me into Screeps, which was like neural net JavaScript programming stuff, but I didn't ever, I didn't ever jump into that. Because I had like some subscription aspect to it or something i forget and then yeah shenzhen io you write asm and build electronics cool wow that actually sounds pretty awesome all right one final sanity check one final test run actually we can do these concurrently beauty of our dockerized test world here. TIS 100? Oh, uh, yeah. One of these days, I don't know, I might... Somebody mentioned Diablo 3 to me yesterday, and I thought, huh, do I want to play that again? I don't know. I was a super late comer to that one. Like, by the time I played it, everybody else was done with it. Diablo 4, please. You're dead to me, okay? No, seriously, though, I just don't want things that are required to be online, you know? Um, I tried Fallout 76 when it was, like, free one weekend. And, I don't know, eh, you know, I just wasn't uh, not retro enough. Well, yeah, that retro feature of offline gameplay, right? This is why Cranky Kong is my channel icon, if I had a cane right here, I would be, like, flailing it around. I'd probably knock something over. Can't cane flail enough. I like my offline games. It's me. <laughs> it's the children that are wrong. Am I really Principal Skinner? I just had a moment. I'm not old. I'm retro. I'm a retro human. crunch Gonzo loves the Zactronics games yeah this seems like there's so much good stuff there um, like puzzle games that really grind your brain in a good way boom that's so what I want to see Opus Magnum okay yeah that's definitely one I've seen yeah, see, it's so great that we have, like, <laughs> more than a handful of these to pick from, from this kind of theme of games. Uh, like, coding games. It's pretty cool. All right, that looks good. We're committing. Uh,
Yeah. <laughs> it's like I said. All right. So here's what we're going to do. So I'm building the test container so I can get in there because I can't use black on my local laptop to actually reformat it the way that it wants to be formatted. Well, maybe I can. Let's just try it. Maybe I'm setting myself up for more work than I need. slightly worried about my newer black that I have locally not liking or coming up with the format that's not happy for the black that I use in CI. <clears throat> High scoreboard. Oh, cool. That would be kind of cool. hacking scoreboard so going back to the plan here this all isn't happening this can happen this is basically done um, this we're going to skip for next time I'm going to go ahead and run mlocks we're going to end today with an mlocks run and a website deploy as will be warranted um whoop Let's see where we're at down here. Good. It's the worst part. <clears throat> I think there's some song about waiting being a hard part it is so what I'm going to do is we'll run mlocks on my uh, I have a bit of a modified total overhaul lo locally um, we're going to run it on that I made some changes like I'm trying a new uh, uh, meteorite ministry alternative and demanufacturers Kogaroon Kogaroon overhaul mod um, and a few other things that are not on the website but um, you know just to see <clears throat> if there's any major changes in what MLOX gives me um, what Oh dear. All right. More formatting nonsense that I don't really give a sh. Hmm. All right. Well, while that's crunching, I guess, let's... So, um, to run MLOCs on my setup is a little bit different from probably your average user setup that's not using Linux. Um, but <clears throat> there is the extra step of you need to have Morrowind.exe uh, installed. Um, I actually keep a different installation for mlocks and uh 
using TES3 command. So like this is just the one that I feed to the game for data files and then I have a separate one that I keep here where I have mlocks installed or I thought I did. This is awkward. I think I might have I might have junked that line prefix. All right, well. No reason we can't just set it up. And if I recall correctly, there is a newer mlocks Our fuzzo, maybe? Let's see. Mm. Or maybe I can... Let's check Discord. I don't remember this person's name. Check the Morwen modding community. Discord, I think they have a channel for this. MLOX rules, all right. Yeah, I think it is our fuzzo. Just scrolling through the pinned messages on their Discord. Trying to find that link. I'm looking for the updated mlocks because it has, no, I don't want to fork it. Ugh, this is awkward. Has some mechanism where it gets Danae's latest rules automatically. GitHub no longer apparently lets you see who starred something, unless you're logged in, which that's just fine. Excuse me for a moment. No, I want to see this forks. No, I don't want to. Yes, there we go. Oh, this is so silly. Yeah. Come on, Google. This is the one. This is the one that I want. But I don't want that. <clears throat> I don't know what this is, honestly. I downloaded this and it doesn't work. I don't know what that is. <clears throat> yeah, okay, I'm just going to clone this.
<clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So, not quite sure again what their Linux artifact is on my Linux here. I usually just do this. <laughs> All right. QMI, QML APIs. Oh, okay. So be it then. And we go again. Boom. Oh dear. I'm having deja vu right now. I feel like I tried this before. <clears throat> so the main advantage to this fork of MLOX is automatic fetching of Danae's rules. Um, but actually... It's pretty easy to update those oneself, so we're just going to do that. I'm going to get the old M-Locks, which does work. <clears throat> and before we get too crazy, we'll just go ahead and run that. Oh, dear. Well, do I even have that? Pi QT5? Allegedly. XML patterns. This is a shot in the dark, but we're gonna try it. Mm. Quick image provider. I really wonder if this is what I need. Oh, I have it, allegedly. Okay. What do you know? QT6, come on. Huh. Quick controls to... Package roulette. Linux users know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so, oof. All right. Quick controls two. Quick controls one. <laughs> yeah, right. Eventually, something will work. QT quick. We're getting there. just installed <clears throat> wait a minute is this it <clears throat> hmm. 
No. No, definitely not. <laughs> All right. I swear I have done this before. It's probably been a minute. Not since I got my new laptop, apparently. All right. Headers, we don't need headers. Plasma, we don't need that, come on. Grasping at straws here. Let's do it. I don't have enough QT junk on my system. I'm dubious. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I thought. Well. I don't think MLOX is happening today. Got to work out what this is. <clears throat> I see this as a good thing that the old one didn't work. Because whenever I fix whatever it is, I can use the new one. And I don't have to worry about, you know, manually keeping track of Danae's rules. Which is what we want. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to say, and I didn't get into before, one of my, you know, inconveniences about MLOX... I don't want to say complaints because I'm not really complaining. It was made by people for free for fun. But one of the inconveniences about MLOX is we need it to, if you don't know, MLOX is the thing that we give it a plug-in order of game content like this. These are plugins, OMW add-ons, ESPs, ESMs. You give it a loadout of these things. And it has some rules whereby it knows that A has to come after B, but B has to come before Q, and so on. And um, it's generally really helpful for working out, because otherwise you have to know what all of these are changing, and it's just not possible for a human to do that. But the inconvenience of it is that you can give MLOX the same load order again and again and again. And each time, it will give you, with the same input, it will give you a different result. It is non-deterministic because it doesn't exactly know where everything should go, right? It, it puts things relative to where other things should go based on the rules it knows about. And so anyway, what you end up with it is maybe like a variation of the order that you have already but like with just random changes that don't really matter at all. And so that's the, um, you know, that's the challenge with MLOX. And um, I don't know, you know, aside from just like hard coding a list like I do. Right here. You know, I don't know the way to solve that. Like there's no ambiguity in this on one hand. It's all right here. Everything is ordered where it needs to go, but like we have to put it here. Um, and the nice thing about MLOX in theory is that it can like respond to changes without a human coming in and, and place things. But I don't know. Maybe 
I don't know what the what the approach is at the end of the day. I would like some way to consume MLOC's data, maybe to produce a reliable good load order, but yeah, I don't know. It's not an easy it's not an easy problem to solve. And to be clear, the load order you see here in front of you was produced by basically um let's see, am I running the website? I am. I made this page here. Let's see if I can remember all logins. I made this page right here that will list out every plugin in the database, everything, regardless of if it's in a list or not. Um, and I'll feed this into MLOX. I have a master sorted all plugins list. I will compare the changes from that. And then I'll go through and I'll load just total overhaul and I will load it into MLOX and I'll compare the changes and I'll do that for each list. And then that way I have, <clears throat> I have a decent baseline. You know, I've put some of the same plugins through MLOX, uh, you know, four or five times seen, you know, if there's any variance, there isn't usually by the way, between the giant list that's filled with conflicts and stuff that MLOX complains about, but it's still reliably sorts it in a way that is familiar when I do a more focused list of plugins. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's typically my pattern, right? Take this, use a small Python script that I wrote to export it to an INI friendly format, copy pasta it into a Morrowind.ini, run MLOX, load the specific Morrowind.ini, get the sorted list, paste that into a file, uh, convert that back to OpenMW friendly format with uh, said magic. Um, and then, yeah, and then paste it into place and then look at the diff in Git um, and see, you know, what if anything is different. Um, and you end up with kind of a picture like this, you know, where we'll see something something was removed, something was added, you know. Um, and then I, then I go back to this file and I, and I reflect the changes here. But again, I try not to, I try not to just like move something around that didn't need to be moved. Something that was just a non-deterministic artifact of, of MLOX being the way it is. So, um, nuts. I was really hoping that we could get that running today, but uh, this is, you know, where is it? This thing right here, I'm gonna have to, pi QT5, QT quick. Um, we'll dig into that later, but uh, I guess, we're going to wrap it up here. Let's go back to the list here. Um, so I'm checking that off because we ran MLOX. Um, you know, it was a major fail. Um, didn't get to that. I'll probably save that for tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll start off with these. And uh, so, yes, yeah, 78% done. I mean, yeah, that's pretty good. Feels pretty good. Um, got a lot done today. So let's go ahead and deploy the website as is tradition. I'm going to go ahead and uh, push my changes up to the old GitLab. Oh, wait. I'll fix this. Off I go then. Off the code goes then. Okay, and with that, we conclude another update the website stream. Um, got quite a bit done, but there'll be more tomorrow. You can check out the note on GitLab to see what's in the to-do section. I'm going to shuffle some stuff around for tomorrow. And uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you tomorrow. <laughs>